So let's do, um, um, so we've done communication with uh, a patient. So let's do a phone call consultation as well. Uh, I would like you to transfer an acute limb ischemia patient to a tertiary center. And I'm sure that you know the scenario. Okay. Do you know the whole scenario? Do you know the findings? Uh, uh, findings, not exactly. Okay. So, so one important thing on these, I know you have a few days just before your exam, but you need to actually memorize the findings. Do you know that? Okay. We, these findings, I have to memorize. It just comes that way. Correct. So you actually okay. need to memorize it because this is the exam, basically. Okay. All right. So is so, this the diverticulitis patient? Yeah, correct. The diverticular disease, the query diverticular disease as well, in addition to the abdominal pain. So the patient had sudden onset leg pain and coldness, paralysis, and absent pulse as an examination. Um, or he has also left lower quadrant abdominal pain, the abdominal soft and tender, background history of diverticular disease, and ECG confirmed new onset atrial fibrillation and ABG showed metabolic acidosis and hypokalemia. Uh, would like you to uh, transfer this patient to a tertiary center for acute limb ischemia. Okay. Can I start? When you're ready, start here, please. Yeah. Okay. Hello, I'm Dr. Devati, one of the surgical doctors working in the surgery department under Mr. Mann in London Hospital. I'm calling to talk to Mr. John, vascular consultant, to refer a case of acute limb ischemia. Can I confirm I'm talking to Mr. John? Yeah, hi, it's Mr. John here. How can I help? Uh, so uh, we have a patient, Mrs. Ruth. She's 71 years old and she was admitted in our hospital with diverticulitis. And her condition improved with IV and uh, with intravenous antibiotics and fluid, but she developed a sudden onset acute low, uh, left lower limb pain. And this was not responding to her, this was not responding to the paracetamol. And on our initial assessment, we found that she has an irregular heartbeat and her left lower limb was pale and pulseless. So we did a blood investigation which revealed hypokalemia and her arterial blood gas analysis showed metabolic acidosis. And we also did an ECG, which was suggestive of atrial fibrillation with premature ventricular beats. And our arterial Doppler was suggestive of acute ischemia. So uh, we, were, we were hoping to transfer her to your uh, specialist care as she's having acute limb ischemia. OK, well, all right. So you think it's urgent and needs to be urgent to transfer to us. Do you think can it wait until tomorrow or not? Uh, no, Mr. John, uh, we need to transfer her immediately as uh, she's having critical limb ischemia and th there's a fear of losing her limb. But I, but I feel like I feel like she has other things as well in terms of, you know, the she had the preventricular complex. Uh, do you want to like maybe get this sorted first before we take her? Uh, no, Mr. John, we can wait until the transfer and we can get it assessed later on by the cardiologist. All right, fine. I see. Uh, what about the diverticular disease? You said you said it's not treated yet, is it? Uh, we uh, uh, we have treated the patient for diverticulitis, and she has also she ha her condition has improved with the intravenous antibiotics and fluids. Uh, but in view of the critical limb ischemia and her atrial fibrillation, I would I would reconsider the diagnosis as mesenteric ischemia. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So I, I was thinking, yeah, do you think you want to sort this out first with the general surgeons before? The limb. Uh, her, uh, as of now, her condition is stable. Her abdomen is soft, and uh, she does not have any tenderness. And I will, I will monitor her condition, and have a serial abdominal examination. And if her condition deteriorates, I will do a CT scan of the abdomen with contrast if her renal function comes out normal. Okay. Yeah, you can do that. And if if you think the case can wait till tomorrow after sorting your diverticulitis, you can call us again. Uh, I'm uh, actually, Mr. John, the patient needs to be shifted immediately as we need to give priority to her acute limb ischemia and it requires urgent intervention or there, there is a chance that she might lose her limb. 
Okay. Yeah, I see. Yeah, that's fine. Um, fine. So you said you're going to send that to us with, even without an abdominal scan as well. Or do you want to get this first? Uh, um, if if I can arrange an emergency abdominal scan, I might do it. But as of now, it is not required because her abdomen is soft and there are no signs of peritonitis and her vitals are also stable as of now. OK, that's fine. So can you tell me what's your management plan? Can you summarize what's the management plan for this patient? Uh, in this patient, um, I will manage her according to the care of critically ill patient, and I would correct her hypokalemia and also her metabolic acidosis. And uh, I will I will uh, contact the cardiologist as she's having an atrial fibrillation and also correct it. And uh, I will also inform the bed manager of both the hospitals to arrange a bed for her in the HDU and either by repartitioning or, or or by facilitating a discharge of a patient. And yeah. I will also inform my consultant regarding this. Okay, but do you think you, you would like to give this patient, you said that you're gonna correct the atrial fibrillation and anticoagulation. Are you gonna correct it with anticoagulation really? I'm sorry, I forgot to mention it. And I will also start her on anticoagulation. And so are, you gonna start her? are you planning to start her? Yeah, I, I I would start what, as soon as I'm, I'm take, off the phone. I'm taking it to surgery. Uh, uh, okay, in case you are taking up her, uh, maybe we can plan I for a yet. minimal. I, I didn't say I'm taking her, but I need to assess her first and decide if I'm going to take her to surgery. But if you give her anticoagulation, uh, you're basically delaying uh, the surgery, right? Um, yeah, you, you're right. Maybe I'll reconsider about re, uh, about starting anticoagulation in case she's being shifted immediately. No, I actually disagree with you. I think that you need to discuss it with someone who's who's a specialist in this area and find out. Maybe you can speak with hematology or cardiology and and see what they think. Yeah. Sure, I, I will do that. It's not, and it's not I'll, a general get... doctor decision. It's a it's basically a senior. Is your consultant involved in this case? I have updated him regarding the case and uh, I will ask him for his opinion as well. Sure. All right. So is the family updated about the, the, the patient condition as well? I haven't informed that on them yet. I thought I will inform them after I'm off the phone yeah. with you. Can you tell me what are you going to explain to the family? Is that okay? I, I would tell the family that she has an acute, redu uh, acute reduction. Uh, she has a reduction in her circulation to her right lower lip. And she needs urgent intervention for which she needs to be referred to another hospital. OK, what type of ambulance are you going to arrange? I would like to arrange a blue light ambulance as uh, there okay. is cardiac monitor. That's fine. Um, yeah, you can send her to us. Uh, and yeah, and thanks for calling. Thank you so much. Thank you. OK, again, what what do you think? I got stuck on that anticoagulation part. I didn't know what. It yeah. Was. What else? Mm, I don't know what else. Okay, that's fine. I'll start actually from the end. Um, so basically, uh, you said you're gonna arrange a blue light transfer. Who is the accepting consultant here? Sorry. Who is the accepting consultant? It's the vascular consultant at the other hospital. What's his name? One second. John. And what's his bleep I don't number? Know. What is this? What's his bleep number? Mm, I don't know. Yeah, and where are the patient going in the new hospital? Uh, he'll go to the accident and emergency, a &E? Not particularly, no. a and &E will not accept this patient. Usually this patient needs to go to a certain ward directly. You would like to ask them. Um, can I please take your number or contact details if I have any further questions? Can I please take your full name or the registrar on call name at the end? And can I please update me where the patient will be going? And I think the answer to that will be you need to speak to the bed manager and they will update you where the patient is going. And it's fine, but you still need to ask. OK, uh, that's the last thing in how you end your consultation. But let's start from the beginning and try to give you like a, a you know slightly more detailed feedback. Your presentation, in my opinion, needs to be adjusted. 
Okay, it needs to be a little bit short and sharp. So you want to say, uh, you want to always start by a question, all right? Or the reason for your call. So I would start in this scenario, you know, after you confirmed whoever the consultant is on. So I'm calling you today to urgently transfer a patient with right acute limb ischemia. That's the, that's the title of your call. I'm calling you to transfer a patient with right acute limb ischemia. The patient is 70 year old. Date of birth is this. His hospital number is this. And presented with all the signs of acute limb ischemia, peripherally called absent pulses, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. He has a background of an. Uh, you know, it has a background of atrial fibrillation. There is new onset that we found out in ECG today. And an examination is abdominal soft, is hypokalemia, metabolic acidosis, and the duplex confirmed acute limb ischemia. My recommendation is to urgently transfer this patient for potentially theater under your care and to manage the peripheral issues, including atrial fibrillation and the metabolic acidosis and the hyperkalemia in the meantime. OK, so that's your presentation with a recommendation at the end. And you need to sort of um, when you're presenting. You need to give me a signpost or maybe like a sign that you're shifting from a situation to assessment to the management. All right, and you can do that by actually changing your voice tone or by making a small pose. Things like that, all right? That will seem more organized. So I would say, uh, hi, I'm calling you to transfer a patient with acute limb ischemia on the right side. So he's 70 years old, with background of this and this and this, and then I'll stop. Just very briefly. It's abdomen soft in examination, it's hypokalemia, metabolic acidosis, and atrial fibrillation, et cetera, et cetera. My recommendation is, or my management plan is, urgent transfer and managing the atrial population and whatever in the meantime all right so that I makes have to start uh, yeah so in the summary uh, summarizing part itself i have to mention that yeah okay okay so in terms of you know uh, you know the consultant was trying to be a little bit you know sort of declining this transfer despite it's very urgent it's very obvious uh, but you need to sell it in a nice way that they have to accept it you need to even answer the question before they even ask them all right so basically the reason why i mentioned my recommendation urgent transfer managing the peripheral issues and meanwhile but i believe that this patient needs to be transferred urgently I, i've tried pressuring you many times pressuring you many times to to get an answer from you that this is really urgent and needs to be done now but what you wanted to say is this is a limb saving procedure which is categorized as category one on the NC pod. Yeah. So this patient needs to just come to you, right? This is a limb saving procedure. Yeah. You don't care about any other medical issue, all right? Okay. Because this okay. is category one. If it's a life or limb saving procedure, they need to take the patient urgently, no matter what. Okay. okay. So you want to say this is category one on NC pod. Because this is a limb saving procedure, so I believe this needs to be prioritized and the patient needs to be transferred urgently to your care and any other issue can be sorted. Or you can actually, in a better way, in a more confident way, you can acknowledge what they're saying. You can say, I do understand what you're saying about the, the, the atrial fibrillation and also the diverticular disease. However, I believe this is category one uh, acute limb ischemia that needs to be transferred urgently for management of the, you know, acute limb scheme, whatever, okay? So you want to, like, do it in a very confident manner, okay? That's the second point, which I wanted to mention. Um, the third point, which is actually very important, I don't think that this patient uh, was already diagnosed with diverticular disease in your hospital or was treated by antibiotic. I'm not sure what's your, your source that told you that, or it has previously came in the exam this way, but my knowledge, that it never came in the exam that uh, it's a diverticular disease and the patient is being treated and has improved. Um, so uh, the, the advice here is if you don't know the answer, 
don't make up one, all right? So I'm not really sure if this is in the exam or not, but if you don't know the answer, if you didn't actually read it in the exam, don't try to make up one, all right? Okay. Just go ahead uh, and say you don't know uh, um, or you haven't seen that in the notes or anything like that. Because in this particular, I, I think I know that this patient is not was not really diagnosed with uh, uh, diverticular disease. He's known to have background history of diverticular disease, but not actually admitted with diverticular disease. Okay. Now, what I'm asking is like, uh, because he's having this, it could be mesenteric ischemia. Can we mention that? Yeah, you can definitely mention mesenteric ischemia, but it can be sorted locally. I mean, when the patient goes to them. But I'm, I'm commenting on a different point here. You said that this yeah, patient... Yeah was admitted with diverticulitis, treated with antibiotic, and has been improving. I don't think that okay. this is correct, all right? I don't think oh, that that okay. would be the scenario. So what I'm trying to say, if okay. it's not in the scenario, don't mention it. Uh, yeah, I shouldn't mention it, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, all right, so the management plan, when I asked you about the management plan, I know my answer here is very short, uh, and it needs to be maybe changed, um, but you wanna say, uh, first of all, I would manage the patient according to the Seacrest, like we said, you want to correct the hypokalemia, think about atrial fibrillation, think about anticoagulation. However, it comes with limitation that this patient needs to uh, sort of, um, you know, might need to go for surgery. So you can discuss with the seniors, you can discuss with the, uh, the hematology and cardiology. So again, I tried to pressure you here and I felt like you're making decisions on your own and you should not, all right? You should really... Uh, be safe and, and say, I'm going to escalate and discuss with this and this. The other thing is, which we actually I need to add here, you need to mention that, uh, of course, after I get an acceptance from you, I'm going to speak with the bed manager in our hospital and the bed manager in your hospital to get a place for the patient and arrange a transfer. Okay. Uh, explanation to the family, I think you've done it well. Uh, so there is no issue. And uh, um, this uh, correction of, we, do we need to mention what exactly we're going to do no. the hypo, for the hypo? You don't really need to mention unless you're asked uh, for it, um, because you don't really know how hypokalemic is the patient. Just mention the title, and if you're asked, of course, yeah, mention it. And one more thing is, uh, so you, uh, so about the anticoagulation, it is right. If he's being taken up for surgery, we are not supposed to give him anticoagulation. Uh, so, like I said, again, that's not the right answer, all right? So you need to be safe and say that this needs to be discussed. With yourself okay, I'll discuss it with, and, with my and consultant the and the... Okay. However, however, you don't feel that starting it now would be the right decision because the patient is going for surgery. All right? Okay. Yeah, so, but you wouldn't give a clear fat answer. No, I'm not going to start it because, well, if you don't start it, the patient is atrial fibrillation and they might give ischemia. Yeah? Then... So, okay. so, basically here you need to sort of get a, a, a multidisciplinary team approach that you know, want to get your surgeon and the vascular surgeon and also the hematology and the cardiology advice and then make a decision. Okay. And this is actually what happens in real life, right? Uh, yeah. I wouldn't start a patient in anticoagulant unless I have all the team on board, right? To do that. Yeah. Okay. 